Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and in today's video, I'm going to be presenting to you guys one of the most important concepts in the industry for web dev that is, in my opinion, not commonly talked about in YouTube videos, which is the idea of having multiple languages in your website. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, if you don't know how to do this, but uh, many websites that you use, you can actually uh, change the text depending on what language is chosen by your, your browser, right? So we all chose our default language when we opened our browser for the first time. For a lot of us is English, but for a lot of us it's also, I don't know, a bunch of different languages. I personally speak three languages. I speak English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So in this tutorial, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to make it such that depending on your settings in your Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using, depending on what is the default language over here, um, the website will show a text which is different. It will show different information. Now you may say, okay, why would you do that? Why can't you just click on this and then click on translate, right? I could do this. I could change this to whatever language I, I want to, right? I can come over here and say, I wanna talk, I wanna write this in Finnish and then translate. And yeah, that, that works. The problem is that this is Google Translate and you don't have control over the exact translation. So what a lot of companies do is they actually um, utilize what is known as localization in their projects, which is um, every string they declare inside of their code, they make it such that it has to run through a function to detect to see what's the default language in the browser and it will match whatever writing matches that language. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that you do need to have someone doing the translations manually, and that gives total control to you as a company or as a developer to actually have the correct words you wanna use. Because you know how translation not always um, works perfectly. Um, so if you know the language, you can actually gather the context of what you're writing and make it sound better. So the way we're gonna do this is by utilizing uh, of probably the most famous um, uh, translation or localization library in React. We're gonna be doing this in React, right? Um, called the React I18 Next library. So to do that, let's open up the terminal over here. And then I'm gonna run npm install. And first I need to install the React I18 Next library. And I also need to install the I18 Next library. So this one just provides us the functionality to work in React. This is the actual core library. We'll press enter. Uh, not dry run, we'll just press enter and it will actually install the package. We can see it here in our package.json and it, it seems that it works. So let's close this up and let's start implementing it. So right off the bat, what I wanna do is I wanna create a file in my React app called the i18 file. So i18n.ts, this is gonna be the file where we actually do all of our translations and where we initialize the library. So to do this, we're going to, right off the bat, uh, import from uh, i18next, we'll import i18n from i18n next, perfect. So now down here, we'll say i18n.use, and we need to run the um, init react i18 next library. So we'll import that from the React um, library. So we'll say React i18 and next, and then we'll just import the init um, function. Perfect. And we'll just put that over here. Now, we have to actually call the init function. And we can pass here an object. Now this is where all of our stuff will go into the translations and everything. We can actually um, move them into a JSON file and just import them if we want to. And we can actually manage them by using their website, which is pretty cool as well. Um, but we're gonna do everything programmatically in this video so you guys can just see it with more ease. So the way we do find this object is to first uh, define the resources um, property. And this property over here allows us to actually write our translations directly. So we can put the language we want. For example, if we wanted to write the translations in English, I can write EN and whatever I put inside of here will, have, will contain the translations in English. Now, if I wanted to write them in Portuguese, I could come over here and do 
P uh, PT, which I believe is the Portuguese um, translate uh, language acronym, and I would write them over there. Same thing for Spanish. This is how I would do it. Now, before we write any of the translations, we can actually um, add some initial information over here as well. For example, we are debugging this project, so I'll leave it in debug mode and I'll say true over here. We can also define a fallback language in case it can't recognize the browser's default language. Um, it will actually choose what is the kind of like the default language in which everything was written. So we do that by writing the fallback language property. And then we put English because I'm writing my website in English. And now we can just close this and start writing a translation. So like I said, I want to write translations for this uh, text over here, right? The text that we have, the only text that we have in this project, which is the click on Vite and React logos to learn more, right? So how do we do this? Well, let's draw it off by just grabbing this text in English and putting it as the translation for this in English. So when we come here to the English part, we can add a translation property. And inside of here, we can write all the translations that will come from our project. Now, how do we organize this? Because if you think a little bit more, spend some time thinking, you'll notice that there might be different texts that are the same like word, but have different contexts to it. So we need to differentiate them in a certain way. So the way we do that is by using different keywords. So we'll show you guys how we define those keywords. I'm going to export this uh, I18N uh, function that we just created. So I'll say export default I18N and I'll come to our app.tsx and let's import that at the top. So import dot slash I18N. Now what I want to do here is I want to import at the top over here the um, use translation hook from the React um, 18 next uh, function uh, library. Then with this, I can actually destructure a couple functions that are going to be really cool for us. So I'm going to say use translation and we can get uh, two specific things. First of all, we can get our I18N that we actually um, or like just access it for different for purposes such as changing the, the, the default language, changing the current language and stuff like that. And also we need to grab a function called the T function, which is going to be for the translations. So let me explain to you guys, whenever we have a text that we want to be able to have different languages in it, we actually don't just put them straight up like this, right as a normal text, we actually have to put them inside and wrapped around this T function, just like this. So that uh, they know that this text will have to be translated. So right now, um, if we refresh this, nothing is happening because we haven't defined a translation and it's assuming it's the same. But um, if we actually define some sort of like um, tag for it, for example, instead of putting the text directly here, we actually put some sort of like um, key to it, like uh, uh, let me think of a good one. Uh, I'll just say Vt react. Let's say that this is the, the tag, right? And we come over here inside of this, and we now create the Vt react translation in English. Then I can put that directly over here. Um, just like this. And we'll see that it recognizes that that's <laughs> the, 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 the text that should be here. Now you might be wondering, well, nothing changed. Well, look at this, we're not actually rendering the thing directly anymore. Actually, if I put even a something that is a bit different from the, the keyword that we defined over here, um, it won't actually show the correct text. But since we put the correct keyword that we defined over here, um, it's gonna go through this function, check for every language which has this V react keyword, and put the correct one depending on what the current language is in our um, browser. So for example, if I were to come over here, and copy this and put it in the Portuguese one, let's let's create a translation for Portuguese. So translation, um, and then I'll say Vite react, and I'll save this and I'll uh, translate this to Portuguese. Let me think of how I'd say this. Okay, this is how I'd probably say it in Portuguese. Hopefully there's no grammar errors. Now, uh, what would happen if we actually were to come over here and change our default language? Well, nothing, 
yet, because we haven't defined uh, how to get the, the language from the browser inside of the library. So the way we do this is to actually in the root of our application, which could be the index, uh, uh, the main.tsx file, or it could be the app.tsx, the higher level one uh, component in your app, React app, you want to have a use effect that is going to um, grab that information for you. So we're going to only render this once and only call this once. And then I'm going to say i18n dot change language. And we're going to set it equal to the navigator dot language. So whenever this component renders, it's going to grab the browser language and change the language to that, which means that if we come over here, I refresh the page, nothing happens because our default language is English. But if I move this to the top, and I refresh this, you see that it changes to Portuguese, which means it recognized that our default language was not English. And um, it worked. So let me try Spanish. Now, let's see what happens. Well, it defaulted to English because that was the default language and we don't have a translation for Spanish. So let's change that. Uh, I'm gonna uh, just copy this over here. And I'm gonna paste it inside of the Spanish part. So I would say that this is probably the best I can do with uh, my Spanish translation. Um, so let's see if this is how it actually says now. Let's Oh, it's already there, right? Because I already set the language to Spanish, which works perfectly, right? Uh, and yeah, you can see everything seems to be working. It's pretty quick to do all of this. Obviously, you do have to manually write all the translations. But I think that that's that's how like that's, at least that's how we do it in, in, in the companies I've worked so far. And there's other things you can do with uh, this translation library as well. For example, you don't necessarily need to create a keyword for this, right? You can actually write all of the strings in English, like this. And then just use that as the keyword, right? I could straight up just use that as a keyword. Uh, and that would work as well. But I, I don't see that as a, a good way to do this. <laughs> You'll see that it still works, it still says the correct thing in Spanish. And if I were to bring Portuguese up, uh, it would again, if I refresh this, say the correct thing in Portuguese as well. Now, this is obviously not the best way to approach this unless you have like very specific strings that you want to do it. But one thing you can do is actually create groups inside of your translation. For example, imagine that uh, this over here, there's more than one text, right? And this is inside of a div, I'll create a div over here, which is going to be the div one. So let's give it a class name, uh, just to differentiate, we're not doing any CSS here, but we'll call this uh, div one. And then for this one here, let's do the same thing and call it div two. Now I want to create a string, and I'm going to write a word, just a single word that can have multiple meanings. So um, I'm going to put the word right, just that right. So right can actually have multiple meanings, right? It can mean right in direction, or it can mean right in correctness. So we'll put both of the te those texts in the into different divs. But on the top one, it should mean the direction one and at the bottom one should mean the correctness one. So how do we differentiate that? Because if I were to come over here, and I were to create a translation for right, and I said, uh, I mean, in the English one is the same thing. But if I were to come over here and say, right, in Portuguese, I would have to choose between the like one of the meanings, because if I were to come over here, you'll see that it only translates one way. So you have to differentiate those strings. And the way we do this is we can actually say, right, and give a keyword before like direction. And on this one, we can say correctness. And then they have a different they have a variety to them. So how do I actually define which one we're talking about? Well, over here, I can say uh, direction, and put the translation for the direction one. And then correctness. And then put the definition for the correctness one. So uh, set that would be how you say right in Portuguese, but in that meaning. And now we have both translations, which are the same word, but with different meanings. Now this could mean a lot of stuff. What I like to do is I actually like to separate my translations based on components. So if I have a component, um, whatever it might be called, I like to actually 
uh, if I have a component called about page, I don't know, I, I like to have a uh, start the keyword with about page over here. And then whatever translations I want for the about page, I put them inside of this. So this is uh, how you kind of organize it. And um, it's pretty much it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. And thanks again for watching. I see you guys next time.